<laughs> well, I am just all the way out of the loop about all of the times back here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even know when you were ending. I was like frantically texting. I'm like, Garth sounds like you're wrapping up. What's going on? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I was scheduled for a half we're fine. hour. That's fantastic. That's great. It's just, it's. I listen to the podcast obviously. Like, also a drug user here, um, and really fantastic to like have you on the filibuster. Like, I've been working back end, and um, yeah, just fantastic having you on here. Um, so, Can I just yeah, say, like, though, like, thank you, thank you for organizing. Like, what a herding cats operation this must have been. I can't even imagine. And like, people like me who are typing my email address into the thing wrong. Like, I'm just making <laughs> making it worse. <laughs> so just, yeah, thank you, thank you for doing that. And hey, to all of the um, the Nazi assholes out there who were, you know, Zoom bombing. I just got a message for you right there. They're 3D, 3D, <laughs> also available in UK version, you know, just in case you're across the water. Yeah, you know, thank you for that. We're all inclusive here. We're all uh, yeah, inclusive yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Everyone bring your own. I, those are the only two I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I mean, we're just transitioning into like a really chill um chit chat me talking to myself um portion of the night and i'm like i'm just taking us for the next half hour and oh then... so it's like bring it down fm radio style right <laughs> oh, here <laughs> let me get some let me get some jazz on for you here you hear that? how's that all right okay so Perfect. so where are we going next <laughs> um you know i was thinking maybe some italy some italy some uh spaghetti for us over here <laughs> you can throw some cans at some politicians heads um just really chill um yeah i have nothing planned nothing so so concise and well delivered as what we had from you it's really just some chit chat some trans shit talking so i mean honestly if you if you have time and you want to stay on the call you're more than welcome to and i would love to ask you some questions or we can just oh. chit chat i mean i don't have questions planned <sighs> um I'm flying by the seat of my pants <laughs> no let's I, I can hang out yeah i'm good cool that's that's sweet um well well i don't even know where to start <laughs> <laughs> Um, when's the last time you slept? Like, have you been like, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> I, got a, I got a couple hours last night. You uh -huh. know? I, I had dialysis this morning. Um, so yeah. Um, last time I had a proper night's sleep. Can't, can't say I would know that answer. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's, uh, that's not abnormal here. Like it's not the, the, the filibuster. That's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, hmm, let's see. What can we talk about? Well, herding cats, let's talk about herding cats. Let's just start there. Um, everyone everyone on the back end has actually been absolutely amazing why don't we take this time to do some back end shout outs yeah definitely <laughs> you've been you've been emailing with tracy yeah um mm -hmm. tracy maybe kate maybe g yeah um <laughs> that's all, all of the above probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think we're just missing you know michaela uh catherine there that's that's pretty much the back crew there and then all of our support people i've got my roommate roped into this <laughs> i grabbed them the last minute um yeah you know the the funniest weirdest question that i got about all of this was when i was talking to media about the the zoom bombing and they asked if we had reported it to the police <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, um, you don't know any of us. <laughs> I mean, A, I mean, A cab, but also B, what's that going to do, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, um, I've talked to other folks who've been Zoom bombed in the past because, you know, I got a decompress after Swastika is showing up on your Jewish screen. Um, and, um, 
yeah, I was talking to them and just, they were like, yeah, you know, we had, we had an incident where we kind of felt like we had to call the police. There are some rare occasions and these are abolitionists that they felt mm-hmm. required. Um, but um, we called the police and the police were like, well, that's a Zoom problem. <laughs> Did they send that to you? Uh, no, they said that to oh, my friend to your who friend, yeah. is like involved in some pretty heavy like abolition ACAB stuff, but mm-hmm. you know, it's still like there are certain lines that must be drawn and we have limited resources. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Did you call the police? No. No, we didn't. <laughs> they just show up to your house and start seizing laptops and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm like, mm. I don't, I don't want the cops near me. Thank you. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, this is taking the same turn as the, what was it? Was this just last night? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have we been only up for one night before this? What happened um, last night? Well, we just, we just got into the late night show end of things where um, mm-hmm. talking about the anarchism, lefty politics that got got some folks up in arms but you know such is organizing hmm yeah um gabrielle just joined the call and i know that she's probably not going to uh to pop on officially but she can see you waving so (laughs) that's great hi thanks for all the work (laughs) Um, did you have anything that you felt like you couldn't cover in the half hour that maybe you wanted to speak to briefly? Anything odds and ends? I mean, you're so, again, you're so concise and precise with your words. Like, I admire that a lot. But um, yeah, anything you want to speak to while we're here? I guess I just think, um, you know, with the mushy political middle, they're always saying they're your friend. You know, they're always saying, oh, we're doing this for you, mm-hmm. what, whatever the hell it is that they're doing. And uh, and it's it's kind of hard to organize because they're very good at splitting uh, segments of movements or, or different communities apart from each other. And uh, so I, I, I love to see this. But, uh, you know, it's like in the Harper days, you just you know where you stood with with them. Right. Like he hates you and he's just going to tell you that. Um and, but it's just this um, this mushy middle. It's difficult, right? Because the people who are writing the target, we still know what's going on. Uh, but but just people who maybe are not so directly affected, who are out there just voting, and maybe they want to be progressive, and they but they they can't follow the details, right? And so the Tr- Trudeau and Horgan, um, you know, the Premier of British Columbia, they kind of make a show of doing something for example, about the overdose crisis, but you have to kind of drill down to, to find out, oh, they're actually doing fuck all, you know, um, they're yeah. just making a show of doing something, but it has the effect of making organizing much harder because if they were just like straight up, like, no, um, then all the voters, all the people out there would be able to see it. And you'd be able to go collect people from the union movement or where else kind of easier. But when, when the less, less affected people are kind of, thinking like, oh, uh, I get, it seems like something's happening. I heard some announcements. That's good. I mean, I have to go to work and take care of my kids. Mm-hmm. I can't be a midnight policy analyst on your issue there, you know, Garth. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it, it makes it harder. And they just, they're, they're so good at that, you know? And so pe- people, people kind of don't realize that um, it, this is just this type of politics is just the real mushy liberal center um <laughs> You know, friendly, uh, charm offensive, but it's it's got the same nastiness at the core. Absolutely, yeah. I think this is really where we get into how um, like liberalism keeps moving towards the right um, and tries to take any kind of uh, so-called leftism with it. Um, and I mean, obviously, a lot of liberalism posits itself as as a side of leftism when when over so many years it keeps moving farther and farther to the right to the point of being centrism um, mm-hmm. and like allowing for eugenics and and all of these things to um, to really thrive absolutely yeah I you know I 
I, I see this parallel, like the, the middle has become so good and effective at erasing the fact that it's in charge, erasing the mm-hmm. very essence of power, the very existence of power in all these equations that people kind of don't think government can do anything. And, and you get, you know, Trudeau will go take a knee or, or go to a climate protest, which is ostensibly against his own policies <laughs> as if who, I mean, I, geez, I wish somebody could do something about this. You know, who, <laughs> who, who could pull a string? And it's just, it's, it's this erasing of power that they're so excellent mm-hmm. at, um, you know, or, or, or maybe even they are withdrawing and pu- pulling back regulations in some areas to, to let the market forces do the dirty work. And then the market, you know, capitalism is also extremely good at erasing its fundamental principles of, of motion. You know, it just seems like this force of nature, this benign thing out there that's so, it's so all around us. It's so like, we're, we're the fish, it's the water. We can't even really see it. And and the, the center, political center does the same thing with power. So there are all these structures which are really just swinging through people's lives like wrecking balls mm-hmm. and just putting holes in the walls, leaving rubble everywhere, but we can't see any of it or we're not supposed to see any of it. And it's just, it's the, it's this kind of vicious gaslighting from all sides. You know, that's, um, that's my rant on the subject. (laughs) No, I absolutely agree with all of that. Like, yeah, that, that faux powerlessness, absolutely. Um, And, and I mean, like capitalism feeds itself in that regard in that People are so busy with their nine to fives with their, and now with all of this gig work, everyone's relying on the gig economy and they have to have three, five jobs to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, yeah, as you said, like these people don't have time to care about policies that aren't going to directly affect them or their loved ones. Like that it's, it's unfortunate, but obviously um, they're going to care about the things that directly impact their lives. Um, and otherwise they're going to be passed out exhausted from, from oh, working at the office all day, working service, it. all of that stuff, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to talk about this shit either. I don't want to be talking about <laughs> fucking cops and drugs for years and years. I'm sick of it. I, just, I, I want to be done with it. If they would, if they would stop, I would stop for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i feel that um i really like this this topic that g has put in the chat for us so i do want to bring it forward um and i i think it can easily tie into what we're already talking about um how um officials try to pit groups of quote-unquote official prescription users and disabled people who use drugs against mm-hmm. each other like yeah um you want to get us started there and we can just rant off of each other. <laughs> yeah. I've, I guess I've noticed um, there used to be a lot of people who, who uh, were, um, you know, pain patients or something like that. And they got cut off of uh, their meds and they were really angry. Cause I mean, it is so destabilizing to your life. And mm-hmm. they kind of said, Hey, it's, it's you guys, it's you like uh, dope fiends out there who, who made it bad, who wrecked it for everybody else. Uh, and you know, it's, that's, that's no good. We're facing the same, the same forces. And I think there's Mm -hmm. probably a little bit of respectability, um, politics going on in that because you want to separate yourselves away from the, the drug user that gets the, uh, you know, the, the bad uh, stereotype from the doctors. You kind of want to, you want to prove to that doctor that you're not abusing Mm -hmm. your med, you're taking it exactly as prescribed. Uh, you know, and I, I, you, you could unpack what is, what those two concepts even mean. I, you know, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. um, goes deep, but uh, I've also noticed there are activists like, uh, Don Ray, uh, Downton, who I, uh, spoke about earlier, who was on our, our podcast episode called cut off, um, Mm -hmm. who does make the links. And I'm seeing more people who are making the links and like, uh, Carlin Zweitz, Zweitz, getting her last name wrong. She's on Twitter. She writes sometimes for the Toronto, star i think or the globe mail and wrote a book called it's getting late for me sorry anyway she's <laughs> she's a pain patient who sees the connections as well <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely also like <laughs> uh super informal again we're we're hitting that late night show kind of vibe so you're good but yeah yeah those connections are so important um not least of which because there are so many pain patients who have to use um 
like uh, unprescribed meds, street drugs, whatever you want to call it, um, to self-medicate because our needs aren't being met. Like, hi, <laughs> right here, um, as a palliative care patient who doesn't get palliative care, like, um, what am I supposed to do um, when I when I run out of meds and because I'm queer and trans and tattooed and um, all of these things, like. I'm not getting the resources that I need with this discrimination. And then you add in race and, and other systemic barriers. And obviously it's just going to compound itself. And yeah, as you said, pain patients and drug users, I really, I really think that we have a natural allyship that really should thrive and would if, um, if politicians and, and legislation didn't get in the way of that, that natural allyship. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. Uh, that's a good point. And I, I go back to um, the original question too, is how is it, how's the division? And it's, it's just, um, you know, it's not like it, it, basically me methanol, what I take and, and what pain patients take, it's all versions of the same molecule, the same opioid molecule. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that's in fentanyl in the street and heroin. It's all just, it's all the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. But we get it under such radically different circumstances. Like you can get it in a market that's so criminalized that you don't know what's in it and it can kill you because of the variations in concentration and contaminants. Or you can mm -hmm. get it at a, a private methadone clinic where you have to take a piss test to, to be able to access it. Or a doctor can mm -hmm. prescribe it to you for pain, but it's, it's kind of all the same thing. And then I don't know how, um, you know, the, the pain of a, uh, like a chronic condition or the pain of an injury at work or the pain of PTSD or the, the pain of, like structural forces like colonization and the trauma that that all causes. I don't know if those fit into nice little buckets, you know, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I know lots of people who are taking like the physical and treating physical and mental stuff at the same time. And I don't even think it breaks down that easily, but certainly yeah. the, you know, the, the dope fiends, the drug users go to the methadone clinic and the pain patients go to the pain clinic or, or something else, or we all just get, get cut off and go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I guess we all go to the street. That's the, the that's the irony is lots of pain, uh, pain patients go to the street in the end too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that's a good point. It's like the, the design of the system um, separates us out. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm a writer, not in an article sense. I got my start as a poet and I'm now kind of switching into like, wishy-washy nonfiction bullshit. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to focus and hone in on those connections in both the um, quote-unquote source of pain, um, however much you can kind of determine that as you were, as you were mm -hmm. speaking to there, um, and, and how we are so segregated by the healthcare system and and how the healthcare system really tries to aim for this sterilization of um, medicine when that's not the reality for how we treat like how we actually in my opinion should be treating any kind of condition um, treating things in a sterile condition is great for like an open wound I think, but when it comes to actual like connection and getting resources and all of that, like segregating all of these resources in this way um, really only serves to remove us from each other. And like, <laughs> that's, that's only serving again, that same system. The name I was reaching for before is uh, Carlin's Warrenstein. Uh, so awesome. uh, apologies to Carlin for screwing up your name, but it's because her Twitter handle has got a short, different name on it. So that's what I always see. So it's in a way, not my fault at all. Darn you, Carla. <laughs> um, yeah, I've gotten so much reading out of this filibuster, just things that I'm like, mm, I hope the library has that, or I hope someone will buy that for me. Because <laughs> mm. um, it's being fantastic, so many... I definitely can't tell you any of them off the top of my head. I mean, it's only quarter of ten, quarter to ten Pacific, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty 
pretty beat. <laughs> maybe maybe a reading list or something like that comes out of this. Honestly, you know, like honestly, a bunch of links we could all comb put... through. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not suggesting anyone do it. <laughs> Someone is already listening to the stream anyways and wants to write out. Maybe maybe we put that when we when we publish the uh, the archived yeah. uh, live stream. Just like if you want to write down any books or things people mention and pass it on to somebody or post it somewhere, we'd love you forever. <laughs> Throw it in the comments. I tell you what, I promise to start. I'm going to go to the YouTube of this. Do I do it on the YouTube or somewhere else anyway and throw the links that I was talking about, the papers and stuff that I was talking about, I can put them in the, in the comments. I love it. Okay. That's a fantastic start for us. Um, I will do yeah, it. like, cause this, this filibuster, I mean, it's core is against C7, but I think at the root of that is, is disabled connection and, and um, like, <laughs> words um yeah connection resourcing each other and if this bill goes through um you know we've all we've all known that that's a definite possibility this whole time um this is this last kind of leg that we had to try and get this done and out of the house and out of the parliament but if it does go through then we have so many more resources and so many more people that are connected and that's nothing but value. That's nothing but value to the community, I think. Oh, the connection is so important. Like um, I have albinism, right? Which is means you're legally blind and mm -hmm. you don't have pigment in your skin, hair and eyes. And uh, I didn't really meet anybody with albinism because it's so rare until I was, until like uh, five or six years ago. And I went to some mm -hmm. conference and I met all these people and I was like, holy shit. And to, to be connected with people who are experiencing the same kinds of forces in the world or the same things as you, it's, it was like, it really like blew my head open. And um, totally. I, I realized that's such a thing for disabled people. Like we all experience a certain amount of atomization and, and alienation from each other and, and, and from the way that communities are organized and even, or the very architecture of the city is organized. It makes it hard, you know? And so finding each other in a place like this, that's really... That means a lot, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's also part of why the Zoom bombing like hit in a particular place where a lot of people were um, like sad or triggered, et cetera. But a lot of us were also pretty pissed off. A lot of us were angry and that Fucking was our, our main response. Right. And I mean, I think that's part of why everything came together so quickly again, because um, we were all running off of that energy of just like, well, this is shit. This is this is not going to stand. Like, We're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do it again. And we're going to do it safer and more secure, which I mean, unfortunately, does take away from a certain amount of community networking. But I hope that folks are finding each other on Twitter and wherever else people are talking about this. Um, so that, yeah, these, these things can continue. Um, cause yeah, I like, so like too. I said, I think that's like such a huge value here. Yeah. You know, and when your experience of life is constantly having, um, people punch down on you, and it's like getting punched in the top of your head all the time when powerful forces mm -hmm. are punching down. And then somebody does that in the zoom bomb because you've just, you've just pushed yourself out and you've just tried to step out a little bit. And then you just get that same familiar, like punch down you know <laughs> and uh and it's like you know it's, it's like it makes me angry it makes me angry because i know the effect of that on people like i know people who just like yeah. every every day is like getting punched and then someone does it in the little the little bubble that you try to make against that and so that's why i was just like fuck you guys so so much mm -hmm. when, um, yeah. before because just yeah yeah i don't yeah. know it's motivates it but um it does make it plain the what's happening in our world totally yeah yeah i was trying to unpack some of that with a a new but close friend of mine and um i mean she's brought up some really good points i think some of some of the the zoom attacks were in some ways like pretty um pointed pretty organized but i think part of it was just someone with an agenda um just being just being shit to us and and 
and um, yeah, hurting us in that way um, because they knew they could. And that's like, that's the crux of it is, is people to know that they can do that. But, you know, like we, we got some good, <laughs> we got some good media coverage out of it. We got, we got more attention on it. We got more support out of it. Um, so it, it wasn't a good thing, but it, it did have some, some nice perks at the end of it all after we are done being uh, triggered by some of the content that was unfortunately shared with us. I think the whole team did such a great job of converting that into amplification, you know, like just like props, props to that. That was, that was genius. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm just keeping an eye on time and also my text messages because we have Tracy here um, to help me out with, I, uh, kind of back end of things, but I'm not updated on anything that we're doing from this point forward, whether it's closing down or not. <laughs> um, as I closing said, down, do we good. just like play God save the queen and put a test pattern up overnight or something? How does that work? <laughs> well, um, last night when we didn't have any tech support and no broadcasters scheduled, I really, I just threw up the, um, the website and shared the screen on the website for a few hours. Um, that way I could get a few hours of sleep. <laughs> and Maybe then we could play, was... uh, play the internationality or something at the end. I mean, anarchists <laughs> and socialists can all agree on that. I think, you know, it's not, it's not too much of a problem. Uh, yes. Oh, um, she brought up Troy was here with us before. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you caught any of uh, Troy's segment, but he um, he was doing a bit of art while talking about C7 and it was pretty chill and low key. And she brought up that maybe he would be interested in returning for a little bit of time here, but um, I can't contact him and also be in a call. That's just, I have, I have ADHD, but you know. If you want to <laughs> step away, I could um, talk for, a minute will you, you I mean, call him if you want you're, to you're welcome to to chat and talk and i'll see if other folks are on this because i um i don't have the most logistics brain but yes please do chat um and i'll just i'll just step away over here <laughs> okay i'm i can hang out here till 10 and then um hopefully troy will be back that's, with his art yeah that's amazing but that, that gives us a good time to get things started cool yeah thanks i was uh just getting ready before this for um a little bit of work tomorrow i'm part of a defund the police movement and um this comes out of a lot of the same power relationships that i was talking about before and it's a kind of a coalition of groups in vancouver called the defund 604 network groups that i'm part of like the vancouver area network of drug users and the bc association of people on methadone but also like Black Lives Vancouver and Pivot Legal, sorry, Black Lives Matter Vancouver and, and Pivot Legal. And, um, you know, kind of came together last year in the wake of uh, the George Floyd's killing in the US. And, um, but also different communities in, in Canada and Vancouver had been working on, you know, raising the demand to defund the police for some time, you know, like really going back to the Olympics, some people around, um, the Vandu, the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, have been calling for, like, let's stop this inflation and inflation and inflation of the police budget. And um, it's, you know, in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, it's almost doubled. Um, so the demand was, let's roll it back 50%, you know, 50% cut uh, defunding of the police. And of course, um, city council and the, and the people in, in involved, powerful people in the city, weren't, weren't really interested in, in a 50% uh, cut to the police. Um, that was pretty dramatic, but they did say uh, maybe we should freeze the police budget this year because it grows every year. They were uh, seeing, this was in the middle of last year, they were seeing obviously uh, COVID had changed everything about the city's finances. You know, some things were more expensive, revenue wasn't showing up. So they were cut, doing cuts in different uh, sections of the city. And uh, just a shit ton of us showed up uh, to city council meetings to argue this point. Um, in a, in a really coordinated way that I was really thrilled to be a part of. And so the city council did say, okay, we're going to, we're going to freeze the police budget. 
But uh, the Vancouver police are not having this. Um, and they have the, uh, the assistance of the police board, which is ostensibly supposed to be a sort of a democratic oversight of the police, but in fact, are sort of like a little uh, helpers or lapdogs of the police. So today, or maybe yesterday, uh, the police board wrote this statement saying, well, we're, no, we're not accepting um, this budget, this freeze. So these are elected people, you know, the city council, the, the voters of Vancouver put these people in charge of the city's budget. Those people decided together, voted on it, said, here's the budget for the next year. And the police are saying, we don't, we don't care about that democracy. Uh, the police board is saying, we don't care about that democracy. We're not accepting the freeze. We're going to this um, uh, director of police services, who's a high ranking provincial official and former RCMP officer, I believe, to have this overturned. And incredibly, this happens. So there's actually, once you dig through all these layers of details and bureaucracy, there's not actually, the people who control the police budget are the police. Um, and, you know, like, I, I guess I'm saying this with great excitement and surprise, but <laughs> maybe I always knew that. Uh, but so, you know, we're, we're entering this moment of, is there any way to get any kind of uh, democratic control over police? You know, I've been in the city for a long time and I've been a part of um, where there's police violence has jumped out against me and other people. We've, you know, sometimes tried to file complaints. We've used different uh, legal and sort of um, administrative law processes to try and get some, uh, you know, some reform or something like that. It does not work. They put up that blue wall and they will not uh, not make with the files. They will refuse to hand stuff over. They'll just they don't want to play ball. You know, so this is like a, they'll slow walk you and kind of um, stonewall you right right to the end of the process and just run out the clock with with lawyers that are uh, paid for, I guess, by the taxpayer. So, you know, we're kind of at the end of there's no more moves to reform the police, um, not not even it would seem budget uh, budget possibilities. Uh, and it, and when the police want something that they can't get off of the voter, they'll go to rich people to get it. So they have a charity foundation, which is where they get like uh, their mobile command action squad, big vehicle looking thing. Uh, or, or, or any number of these other, uh, these other sort of, um, this happens across North America, actually, lots of police forces end up getting these sort of uh, high tech paramilitary toys off of these uh, police charities, like fundraisers, right? And uh, so this has been going on in Vancouver for some time. And Peter Wall, who's a big developer here, um, a couple of weeks ago says, oh, I'm going to give a million dollars to the police and I want them to use it on these four blocks. And he sends a map. You know, and so it's and he says, uh, you know, particularly I want them to do this because I don't think safe injection sites are, are a good idea. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we're in this position where uh, if if we ever get a hold of the police budget or, or have can influence on it, they always can go to uh, wealthy, rich people who, who will pay for their own style of policing if they want. So I encourage anyone to join the defund the police movement because there is such great uh, compliment to the kind of power relations we've talked about on the filibuster to the way uh, things are stacked against to the fact that um, just like we were talking about before, it's very hard for people who are marginalized to call the police and be confident that there won't be an outcome that could be just bad for, for us. Um, so I'm one of those people. I can't I can't really call the police. I don't know whether it's going to get my friend hurt or my friend in jail or me in jail or me hurt or someone one of us shot or somebody else shot. Like I just, uh, you know, you can't do it. So um, I, I think we all build communities like we're doing now. We all can actually play a role in keeping ourselves and each other in our community safe. Um, that's what happened, uh, you know, for 10,000 years around here before uh, British style policing showed up. Um, why can't we reorganize our world so that we can do that again? And that is my vamp that takes us to the top of the hour. Thank you all for, see, I talked for, I was going to talk for eight minutes and I talked for seven minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, that's, that's radio training right there. <laughs> that was fantastic. It felt a lot like I used to do slam poetry and like spoken word and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, you know, your timing. This is great. Nice. Um, that was fantastic. Um, 
Yeah, thanks so much for, for spending a bit of extra time with us and closing us on such a fantastic note. We are going to shut down for the night and I'm like, it's just uh, nature of security things and whatnot. I, I think, as G said, we're gonna reserve energy because we've got the vote coming up tomorrow. Um, I think that was at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time is the vote on B Bill C-7. Um, if I'm wrong, please do check the Twitter. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I'm doing this off the top of my head and uh, we were doing logistics in the chat. So again, thank you for closing us on such a great note. Um, oh, thanks for having and, me. Uh, that was so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thanks Great to the to whole team. You. And yeah, totally. Um, Echo the um, join the join the defund group. We've got we've got Tracy here, but I know I was Garth. just waving. <laughs> I was just waving at Garth and realizing that that was so ridiculous. Bye, Garth. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, be safe. Have Keep six, everybody. Night. Bye. Respect. Cheers. Um. So my information is coming in from all directions and I want to- well, I thought I'd pop um, in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna stay on this, but um, we, do, we do want to stream tomorrow. So we want to save some energy tonight because we want to go hard tomorrow, um, no matter what the vote outcome is. Um, but if you if you want to have some decompression chat time, Tracy, um, we can absolutely have that and just finish that that down here um, on on a on a decompression note and just work our ASL interpreter a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, you know, just wrapping it up. I I didn't get to hear everything that Garth had to say, but I just. You know, every now and then I'd pop in and it was always just this, I don't know, it, things that seem so obvious, but for whatever reason aren't obvious to the people making these big decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And half of me is like, man, I wish we had folks like Garth making these decisions, but then I'm also like, but then I wouldn't, then I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> I trust him because he knows like the complexity and the weight of it all, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, think that's... the best the best politician we've got is the one that doesn't want to be in office. That's really fair. It's really, you know, and it is like it's a tough job. Yeah, to no, into, it's definitely you know it's definitely a tough job. And I think it if you're not really careful with it um, and have a lot of respect for the people that you're serving um, and all of the people that you're serving, um, there's, there's a part of you that can really get worn away by the process of becoming well-known enough and becoming that politician and doing that kind of service. And um, yeah, if you're not careful, it can do, can do some awful things to kind of your ethics. Yeah. No, it's really true. And I mean, even, you know, outside of politics, when you get into kind of structural um, situations, you know, we started as a grassroots organization, BC at Access, and we're still very grassroots, but, you know, every now and then I can feel the structure creeping in. And I always, you know, I'm fortunate to have like great people that mm -hmm. we work together and, you know, we, we remind each other why we're there, you know, that we're activists we're not you know <laughs> absolutely um, organizational folks really so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um I think that's part of why I, I've loved this filibuster so much is because like everyone's just involved because this is stuff that we care about right like we're here because um because Bill C7 is important to us um Oh, Tracy. So we're going to do some on air back end again as we close the night, as is our beautiful way, you and I. Um, would you mind checking the schedule in the Google Drive? That should tell us when we're back on tomorrow so we can give yes. everyone that's still tuned in that information. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, we are back on at 7 a.m. Eastern, Eastern time. 
tomorrow. And we're not actually quite sure what's happening yet at 7 a.m. because there may be someone coming in, but it might be um, one of the great videos that we've gotten permission to share. Beautiful. And I, either way, you know, it will start up at that time. And uh, for, I can tell you for sure, we'll have Dr. Amy Cavanaugh um, oh, at nice. 10 Eastern for two hours, Eastern. which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, That'll and be fantastic then, for sure. Yeah, and then, um, you know, I don't know if you talked about it when I wasn't here, but um, tomorrow is the 11th anniversary, if I've got it right, mm -hmm. of the ratification or implementation, I'm not sure which, of uh, the Canadians, or not Canadians, sorry. <laughs> I'm so tired. You're doing great. <laughs> the it's convention, totally the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Yeah. Um, we will have some really amazing people coming who participated 11 years ago um, at the UN um, mm. in sort of making all that happen. And, uh, you know, some great legal minds talking about the connection between that and Bill C7. That will be fantastic because mm -hmm. if anyone tuning in doesn't know, the UN um, did write, what was it, like a seven page report? It was a, it was a long report mm -hmm. on how Bill C-7 actually um, violates that, that convention. Um, and, and yet here we are um, still literally like many of us are like, yeah, I don't, I don't beg. I don't, I don't do the begging thing, but you know, I literally wrote in my email to the MPs, like I am begging you not to put this into place. Um, this will kill people that we care about. This is going to kill, like this has the potential to kill so many folks that we care about. Um, for some of us, it has the potential to kill us. Like yeah. that, that is a case. Um, so yeah, this is, very important but I think that that wraps us up pretty nice and tidy so again that's 7 a.m eastern time so for us pacific folks that's 4 a.m if you're <laughs> got that old insomnia you've got an early morning job whatever the case um you can tune in and have have some crip company whether it's a video or or someone coming in to speak or or what have you um and we'll be going as hard as we can tomorrow all the way through the vote and past the vote um, as much as we have support and broadcasters and it sounds like we have an amazing lineup for tomorrow mm -hmm. yeah lots of people I didn't mention yet so and I want to thank you for coming back again because <laughs> um, I know I've only been doing this for a day and a half now and <laughs> I, mean, I feel like oh gosh we've been working together for so long yes. <laughs> I honestly cannot believe last night was the first like night of the actual stream like it getting off the ground and not just yeah. getting zoom bombed but no. yeah no that's that's wild um it's been great getting to know you <laughs> yeah I know it's been really awesome really enjoying it um, yeah um so Yes, so we're, we are going to shut down the stream tonight and then um, come back again tomorrow, folks. So lovely to see you all and everyone can leave the call and I'll shut it down from this end. <laughs> ah.